Glory to Jesus. I greet the beloved church, the ones who are visiting us, and also the ones who are watching us through the media with the grace of the Lord Jesus. We're going to open our Bibles in the book of Psalms. We're going to read the second chapter, chapter 2, verse 12. Verse 12, the last verse of chapter, uh, the second chapter of the book of Psalms. Verse 12. Deus says the word of God. Beijai o filho, para que se não ire, e pereçais no caminho, quando em breve se inflamar a sua ira. Bem-aventurados todos aqueles que nele confiam. Bendito seja o nome do Senhor. A igreja pode se assentar, o grupo estará apresentando. A all those who put their trust in him. Now the praise group is going to sing a song that was prepared for this night.
Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to be in His presence. How good it is to feel the touch of the Holy Spirit. How many of you can come here and say that the Holy Spirit has not touched you with the praises and with the glorifications? It was yet another gift that the Lord has prepared for us to be in the house of the Lord, to be here finishing the day, preparing the days and activities of the week, proclaiming that one day He will return. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. The text that we just read is a text of which we see a need of an intimacy with the Jesus who is alive and is revealed. We see the expression, kiss the Son. We observe that the faithful church has been in that position. There is a people that has come close to the Lord, that has kissed the Son. Prophetically speaking, we are referring to you know, of a closeness with the Lord and a desire and plea, Lord, tell us your secret. Reveal to us your mysteries. And why is that? Because through the revelation of the mysteries, through the revelation of the secrets, is that we are going to walk on the path and we'll get to the destination that our soul desires, which is the glory and eternal life of the Lord. But we have observed throughout the world is that people, the more they try to know Jesus, they use just the historical and in this search, in this seeking to understand the Son, they begin to, they end up getting confused. They get attached with what is material and physical. Jesus that was born in a manger and also, also the ones who go to the Jesus that was an adolescent and other Jesus that had died. How poor Jesus was. They feel sorry for Jesus because he suffered, was whipped, was spat on, he was slapped. And even those that go to the tomb and then they stop there. But there is a people that has understood the reality of the third day. And on the third day, he overcame death, the greatest of the enemy of man. He was m as, as courageous a man is when it comes to the moment of the departure for this life. There is a harmonious, there is a repentance mixed with remorse. And they call everyone because I wanted to for ask for forgiveness because I know that I'm going, not going to last, and, and it is the greatest of our enemies. But on the third day, Jesus defeated our greatest enemy. And when he overcame the death and resurrecting, he gives us a guarantee of eternal life and takes away the fear from us because he makes us understand that after the physical death, we get into the best part of our lives, which is eternal life with God. One day we'll see our saviors face to face either through the gathering by the Lord or through the rapture that we just can't sing. Maranatha, the Lord Jesus is coming to take his bride, his church. And the world, as they are seeking to know Jesus through reason, through mathematics, through physics, they end up getting more and more confused. And in this confusion, they get attached to a God that, according to them, is a God of, God, of love. God that would allow me to do this and that and that because he's love and if he's love I can do everything Apostle Paul used an expression that is in the letters everything uh, is uh, allowed to be but not everything is wise for me to do so we need to control our impact and our flesh and our impact and our desires to have a uh, sinful nature in this in this sinful nature we are inclined to do what is the opposite of what God wants and desire and hopes for us what God wants for us you went in here tonight maybe thinking what can I do to please God what can I do to please God this God what can I do to satisfy him what can I do to get approved be approved by him and the answer is on verse 12 of Psalm 2, which says, which says, Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way. So there is a path 
to be walked. The ones who are with the Lord and they are adults, the expression generally is how sorry I am for not have walked in this path earlier. I could have enjoyed much earlier of all those benefits. And which are those benefits? Salvation in its original is the root of everything that man wants that's good. Everything that man tries to find in medicine and psychiatry or psychology, the word soteria, which is the origin of salvation, is the root of salvation and happiness and health and serenity. And this was it not what you came here to seek? If you came, you found because He is present. He is the Lord of Lords. He is one who sent His Son to save us. And the text is most well known throughout the earth, practically, because love, God loved the world in such a way that He sent all, His only begotten Son, begotten Son, so that whoever believes in Him may not perish, or in other words, may not die, but have eternal life. And this love was concentrated on the Son because for a moment He left His entire glory, all His majesty, and came and went through us and was born just like us. He was grew up, suffered, felt hunger, cold, pain, tiredness, so that you and I could be feeling comfortable in His presence. See, my brethren, everything that Jesus suffered was so that we would not suffer the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. He gave himself. There's no need to force him. There's no need to have brute force because when they came to imprison, to take him away, because it was already a moment to, for the prophets to be fulfilled. The Bible says that passif pass uh, passively, like a, a silent lamb that goes to to be killed, a sheep uh, would uh, scream because even though the animal it was a rational animal, it felt like it knew that something bad was about to happen. But Jesus, no, he went silently because he knew that the Father wanted him to go through this. Because today, in the 21st century, we could enter into salvation and have take possession of a life that we do not deserve. So. When he died on the cross, it was so. Uh, it was a cross that you and I should have been crucified. And when he was whipped, it was because we should be whipped. We, as sinful human beings, we deserved. Him. But he took our pains over him, our infirmities, and went through this death to deliver us from this death and to guarantee us eternal life. We have studied in our Sunday schools about the relationship of the disciples with Jesus and how Jesus before his departure was relaying what was happening step by step to prepare them but there was one of them that calls our attention to who's John there are many texts where it is referred to John as the disciple that was loved but there's no there was no preference from the part of Jesus no on the contrary, it was because John was always interested in being with Jesus. He wanted to be close to Jesus. He wanted to be close to the Savior. He wanted to know the mysteries. So that in the moment of the last Passover, when Jesus was with them, and Jesus introduced a new way of understanding the Passover, because previously the Passover, there was a lamb, there was a bitter herbs, and did, did not see all, any of it because he is the Lamb of God that took the sin away from the world. There was no need for a real Lamb because he was a Lamb. And how about the bitter herbs? Where are the bitter herbs? The bitter herbs are represented in the suffering that Jesus was going through for love to you and, and me so that we could achieve the salvation. And he introduced two elements that last night he introduced two elements, that, which is the bread and the wine, which was would represent his flesh that was going to be crushed. It was be ripped away to save us. And his blood that was shed to the last drop. You may have never noticed this, but from the moment of the imprisonment of Jesus, the slabs 
the whips, and everything that he suffered. The crown of thorns that was placed in his head. All of this had a, a prophetic representation to cause him to shed all his blood. And at last, there, when everything was over, a soldier in an act of cruelty pierced his body with a, 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 a spear and his blood was shed when the water also came out. It is speaking about the word that speaks about the word that is being shared with you tonight so that we may achieve salvation. Now, act like John. John sitting down there, he asked, uh, Jesus said, one of us will be betrayed. And they all looked to John because John had intimacy with Jesus. And they asked, John, who was this? And John sat next to Jesus and Jesus revealed to the, the secret and many did not understand. He said, the one who, who I give you the bread that's wet, this one is, will betray me. The wet bread is the one that you love the most. When there was a supper and, and the host wetted the bread and gave to you and that would he would give to that person he would that would mean that he he would, he loved that person specially and even though Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him Jesus demonstrated the love he had for him and the love that he has to each one of us and John not uh, not satisfied the Bible says that he leaned his head on Jesus' chest and you do this when with someone that is your very good friend, somebody with whom you have great intimacy. When you do this, you hear the pulsation of their heart. And John experienced this. He heard the pulsation of Jesus' heart. And there, there was a prophetic representation of what was going to happen to John later on. Because the disciples were departing. They would be uh, imprisoned and killed. But Jesus spoke about John, that he would remain. And many of them thought, will John not experience death? But they, he was re making a reference that John will last longer than the others. Because when John was exiled on the island of Patmos, he would receive the revelations that were wonderful, contained the book of Revelations. And how, and how important it is for us to study about this and understand the details of this path. It is so that we may not perish in this path. Second part of this verse. Kiss the son lest he be, be angry and you perish in the way. It speaks about the world that does not know Jesus prophetically and they use the expression Jesus is love and he is permissive but God is also justice. God is love but he also there is also responsibility. It's love with responsibility. There's a text that we may bring here to this message. Everything incorporate for the ones who love God. You love God. You want to do God's will. Everything that you need to do is to seek intimacy with God. Kissing the sun is to be in prayer. Kissing the sun is lean your head on the chest of Jesus. Perfectly resting in Him placing on him all your anguish and all your afflictions knowing that he takes care of us and he's preparing us for a place that will lead us to eternity we are tracking this path and you who are entered here tonight you are at the table with Jesus Jesus is present take advantage of this opportunity he is the son so may not be angry and you may perish on the way because blessed are the ones who trust on him because trust in the Lord is present in the life of each servant, every hero of the faith, including the life of John. They trusted and understood. That's why he was blessed. My brethren, this expression of intimacy of John with the Lord is the same with the faithful church. You and I are the faithful church of God, and we are paying attention to what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. Remember the theme of this year. May not forget what the, who has he listened to the Spirit, know the Spirit, listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. And what the Spirit intend to us? Kiss the Son, so may not perish, so that we may be able to achieve salvation. It's open up your heart and say, Lord, I accept you, I accept you as my only Savior. I want to leave this place with my name written in the Book of Life. I want to be present with you at the table on the eternal wedding. 
when you come in the clouds, when I hear my name be called, when I hear my Savior face to face, blessed be the name of the Lord. to Jesus. That's the name of the Lord. Oh, Brandon. Uh, the Lord gave us a couple of spiritual gifts for the service and in one of those gifts the Lord is showing you a woman that has brought in form of a prayer a request to the Lord by one of her children who is sick. The request was so that the Lord may heal this son. Her heart is afflicted. And she promises the Lord. Lord, I'm going to give everything to your author. And the Lord want the Lord to hear my prayer. And that's what it is. We have a responsibility, a commitment with our with what it, or the inheritance that the Lord has given us. Our children are inheritance from the Lord. That's why it's so important that we be fighting for the life, not only physical, but the salvation also of all the family members, especially 
the ones who are closest to us, our children. Fight, yes. The Lord is pleased, and the Lord will answer, surely, by faith, to this request. The Lord was also showing the situation. He spoke to a couple of families. The service today is geared to, toward a couple of families that the Lord wants to perform a, a great blessing. The Lord wants to operate a deliverance, a renewal, and steadfast their matrimony. The Lord wants to reach many hearts, many homes. They need the presence of Jesus. This is the message, kissing the Son, having an intimacy with the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus, in his first miracle, it was in a wedding. The wine, the wine ran out, and Jesus there, he transforms water into wine. The life in the home, especially a Christian home, needs to have the presence of the Son. Needs to have the presence of Jesus. It's not worth. There is another lady here. It's a woman that was unable to remain firmly in the presence of the Lord because she always remembered her childhood. A childhood that was difficult where she did not see a, a good environment where she only was only mistreated and she attributes this her highs and lows today of what when she went through in her childhood. But the Lord is telling you tonight that He's going to give to this sister a deliverance. And a deliverance on her mind. The problem is not the location, is not what happened. The problem is that the solution is to live in today. The servant of God needs to be in fellowship with God at every moment. And we could never in any way attribute and blame A, B, C because the Lord always is willing to operate. The Lord is always willing to bring you the answer, but it is important that we are leaving God's presence. So here is the advice of the Lord for this lady. Today the Lord is delivering you. This difficult moment that you are experiencing that you experienced in the past but now your new creation Jesus so here's another message for another woman that has thought many times in her wedding in her family about her family and she sees no solution and even thinks that it's impossible for an, a restoration but the Lord is telling to this lady that she needs to go back and stay in God's presence so that when she does that the Lord will use her inside of her home so that the operation of God may be manifested so look there is there is no guilty party there is only thing that is important Jesus is at our disposal amen I invite the church to stand up Another spiritual gift saying that there is no, it's not worth a change of routine and behavior. What is important is that we remain in God's presence. We already know this. What's the problem is that people that know, but they don't listen. They don't want us to know the direction, know the Word of God, but do not put that into practice. So it's not the environment. The situation is in us. We need to fix our lives, kissing the sun and being in fellowship with Jesus and hear the voice of God. Amen. Let's pray, bringing the service to close. You already saying? Yes. Amen. So, Lord God, at this moment, I want to once again glorify your name. 
because we we'll start a week in your presence. Aware, Lord, that you are at our, at our disposal, ready to hear our plea, ready to hear our intercession, and ready to remove the pain, remove the suffering, and operate peace. That's why tonight, Lord, we say a prayer, a special prayer, to all our families, so that you may reign in each home here represented. Lord, we ask that our doors, Lord, may be open, so that the ministration of the Lord may be real, may be evident, may be seen, Lord and that you may have access to our hearts continue operating salvation deliverances and continue saving Lord for the glory of your name never allow Lord your people to err or look back or to desire to go back but that we may always be under your powerful hands hearing your voice and feeling the touch of the Holy Spirit as the prayer that we say tonight the intercession that we say in the name of Jesus Amen and you know, in your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God our eternal Father the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit may be proud to all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. We are bringing this after to a close. We'd like to remember the brethren that Tuesday night at 8 o'clock have the teaching of the Word. So it's do, done through Zoom. So the brand and the groups should be paying attention to this because every time that we read the Word of God we learn to love Him and serve Him even better so it's very important that the brethren are participating on this special service teaching of the Word and on Thursday at 8 p.m. also we have appeared in the session here in the church a uh, service of prayer and I ask the brethren as, as when possible to participate here and Saturday morning at 6 o'clock in the morning it's a special service of prayer and early dawn on 6 afternoon uh, women service and 7.30 a normal service and Sunday morning at 10 and also always 7.30 Sunday, Sunday evening Amen it's a moment for us to be praying to the Lord ever more and hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit so we wishing you all the peace of the Lord if you need a, an assistance a prayer and a clarification of what the service was and you want to go deeper on any topic we are here to pray for you, wish you every, I wish you all the peace of the Lord Wednesday it's going to be fifth Wednesday of the month and every fifth Wednesday of the month we have a, a meeting special meeting for the women so we're going to meet all the church here in Florida every woman uh, is invited to participate the ones also that want to participate so this Wednesday this Wednesday at 8 p.m. is a special service for the women through Zoom through Zoom Amen Wish you all the peace of the Lord.